Hello and welcome back to Realm of Thrones 4.0. Okay, so here we are at Evenfall Hall. Obviously, in the previous episode, we were searching for companions, and we now have a pretty good smattering of them. Now, the only thing that we're missing kind of now is an engineer. However, <laughs> and that brings me to the next point, I actually haven't even checked to see what this guy's stats actually are. So if we take a look at, uh, where is he? Maester, there we go. So... He only has four in intelligence, which is actually not even that amazing. Um, I was actually thinking that he maybe have at least five, but oh well, never mind. Doesn't really matter too much because he does have 120 in medicine, which is exactly what we kind of wanted him to have. He also has 50 in engineering. But of course, 50 in engineering in general, probably not really going to help us that much, especially considering this guy is most likely going to be assigned to be our surgeon. So, now that brings me to the next point. We need to find an engineer. So I'm very much hoping that we'll be able to do that. I think we'll... That's the thing. It's a bit difficult to find one right now. However, let me just take a quick look and see if there is anyone good at it. Yeah, this guy can actually do it. So instead of being a scout, he can actually do that. Let's, let's see if anyone else is good at scouting. No, okay. So problematic situation here. This guy is amazing at scouting. I kind of want to keep him as our scout. Uh, but he also does have engineering. So I suppose what we could do is in a pinch, we could change his assignment over to engineer when we attempt to besiege something. And then we're, we're going to lose all of his um, you know, scouting bonuses and things like that. So that is obviously a bit of an issue. But anyway, we're here at Evenfall Hall, as I said. Oh, and there's actually a horse available here. Okay, this is absolutely perfect. So going to go and do the tournament first, then we are going to go and invest in a business. Yes, we're going to try and get a workshop up and running. And I think personally, I think someone actually also suggested this and I thought myself, hey, you know what, we should probably just, you know, get a, a workshop in one of the richest towns yeah. available. And that is King's Landing, of course. So yeah, we're, we're going to try and see whether we can actually get something that's going to be kind of decent. I'm usually not a hugely big fan of the workshop system in Bannerlord specifically. I personally feel like it is lacking in a variety of different ways. I know some people say that it's actually not and you know you just need to build something in the correct position for it to give you any kind of benefit or profit or whatever. And uh, I don't know. I, I think, yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I think that can definitely be the case. But for me personally, whenever I have attempted to do anything at all in regards to... Oh, wow. I literally only have a spear to deal with this guy. This is going to be impossible. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm actually not entirely sure. I don't have anything else to deal with him here. Right. Well, uh, the only thing I can do is kind of hope these guys actually help me out. Oh, no. That person's not doing very well. Uh, I kind of want to pick up... Dude, can you help me, please? Please. Can you can you just kill him? No, no. Okay, you didn't want to kill him? Oh, okay. Well, that, that's absolutely fantastic, isn't it? Okay, I kind of want to pick up this um, blue team member's sword, but I can't do that. I really wish they would actually do something here. I can't do any damage to this guy, as you can see with this spear. He's way too in my business. And I won't be able to, as you can quite clearly tell. So I'm just going to have to infinitely block here, because we really want this horse. But um, yeah, anyway, as I was saying, basically workshops. Never mind then. Uh, we're going to have to wait and see whether Mr. Dragonstone Bowman can actually do anything. Um, I'm, I'm, hi I'm, I'm highly suspecting that he will die. I'm just going to speed things up real quick. And yes, our team was indeed eliminated from the tournament. Ah, oh, isn't that, that... That's so funny as well. Every single time I do something like that where I'm like, oh yeah, we really need to win this. That's what happens. Yeah, that is what happens. Oh well, never mind. Okay, I, it's actually a pretty big deal, but I'm going to act as though it is not. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're now going to move on and we're just going to go over to King's Landing real fast and uh, we're going to see what kind of workshop we can get because here's the thing, when you play a game like Warband for example you have the ability to kind of determine pretty easily what 
kind of profit you're going to get from each individual location. For example, you know, you can go up to uh, River Chegg all the way in the north where the Vegiers and the Nords are. And you can pretty much say to yourself, I will 100% have the ability to build a weavery and dye works here. And this weavery and dye works is going to be absolutely amazing. No it's going to be so good that we will, we will have no problems whatsoever in recouping our investment. Now, in Bannerlord, that's obviously not the case. For some reason, they don't tell you the profit that you're going to gain from workshops. At least that's what they, they used to do. So I'm actually not entirely sure because it's been a long time since I've actually, um, you know, tried to build one, to be honest, because uh, as I say, I've just kind of lost um, enthusiasm for it, I guess, you know, because on the one hand, sometimes it can be extremely lucrative if you're actually very lucky in what you're building or uh, maybe just lucky in terms of the uh, current economy in that faction. You know, any number of factors can influence how much money you're going to make from an enterprise or from a workshop. But I've always found that it is so much less than it ever was before. For example, you, you, do you remember way back? I don't know whether that... Okay, here's the thing. If you haven't been watching my videos for a long time and you haven't been watching since the very beginning of... Um, Bannerlord's life cycle when it was first released into early access. Might as well take this follower. Why not? Um, but yeah, if you haven't been watching since that time, then you won't know this, but workshops actually used to give a, in, an absolutely insane amount of profit every single day. And now obviously that was overtuned, that was way, way too overpowered and basically people were going into uh, Sturgeon territory and they were purchasing a wood workshop because at the time I think that was the most effective one. They were purchasing a wood workshop and making, uh, I don't know, 10,000 per day or something like that. It was, it was really, really crazy. And I'm not saying that I want that to come back obviously I really don't want that to come back but I would like a little bit more transparency in regards to how much you're actually going to make from a particular workshop and I'm not talking about hey you got to tell me exactly what I'm going to make every single week or every single day in this case no I'm not asking for specific numbers or anything like that but just something simple like how Warband did it where it basically said you can make this much and currently the price is this but then there is always a fluctuation. There could be a fluctuation in the economy. And that's kind of what I'm getting at here. That's what I'm kind of hoping will uh, be implemented at some point. I don't know whether that's even going to happen, but we're just going to take some hired spears and sell swords here. I'm not going to take the Sturgeons because that doesn't make sense, but yeah, we're just going to make the uh, take the rest of them here. And uh, we can actually equip some people finally as well. So as you can see right there, wow, that, he's getting an absolute enormous amount of stuff, which is really nice for him. And oh, look at that. Oh, Lord Varys is literally using that camel. I know that's actually really funny because someone mentioned in the uh, in the comments that you'd like to see Varys riding the camel. And uh, well, he did it himself. I didn't need to do it. He did it himself. Everyone else has obviously equipped some stuff. And I have apparently replaced my step arrows with a large bag of lowland arrows. Not sure if they're any good, but apparently the mod thinks they are good. Oh, they are actually very good. Look at that. Two piercing damage and a 30 stack. That's really, really nice. Um, yeah, but otherwise uh, we need to give this guy a shield. There we go. That's going to be a little bit easier for him. And he needs to get some shoulder pads. I'm actually wondering if we have any. No, we don't have any shoulder pads. Okay. Uh, Lord Varys has no... All right. Not sure what's going on there, but he has no saddle. Uh, don't know why he, he didn't get that. Oh, wait a minute. Do I... Oh. Okay. Yeah, he can't actually use the camel right now because I do not have a saddle for the camel. I, I think I'm going to need one, right? Minus, no saddle equip, minus 10% penalty to mounted movement speed and maneuvering. Mm, that's a, I, I, I don't know. Sh should I, should I bother with that? I don't know. I kind of want him to use this because it's, it's fun. Um, but I'm actually just going to do this just so that he has a, uh, a saddle here that he can use. And obviously, do, does he have any bow skill actually? 
He has crossbow skill a little bit. He's got a little bit of bow skill, so we could potentially give him a bow here. But it's probably uh, it's probably not going to be that useful for him, but we might as well. All right. Anyway, there's another band of uh, Kingswood outlaws over here as well. I'm, I'm kind of um, kind of enjoying fighting these guys, actually, because they kind of remind me a little bit of forest bandits and taking a, bit of, you know, a little bit of revenge on them is never a bad thing. And getting some nice experience for our for our uh, army as well is always nice. Anyway, let's tell everyone to charge in. Obviously, that's basically what we're going to be doing against these guys. They're not really going to be able to do too much to us. And we are also gaining one-handed weapon proficiency, which is exactly what I wanted to do with all of these with all these fights, because it's actually going to make a huge difference to my overall renown gain if we can get to 100 in one-handed. So hopefully I will be able to do that as well. Oh, so many kills right here. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. You get the right one-handed weapon and you're going to have a whale of a time riding on horseback into battle. It's so good. Really, really is. So incredibly good. Anyway, there we go. Another victory for us. We're gaining renown by doing this as well. Gaining gold as well, which is always nice. And now we can just level up some people here. Unfortunately, we are using our noble... I think we're... Are we using our noble mounts to do that, actually? Did I did I just sell my noble mounts? No, no. Did, did I? Yes, I think I did, actually. Aha. Okay, well, that's not exactly what I wanted to do. Okay, that is not what I wanted to do at all. But... All right, I guess uh, <laughs> I guess that's what happened. Yes, that is indeed what happened. So I should probably sell those things a little bit earlier, shouldn't I? Should probably make it a little bit easier for us to, um, you know, make some cash from that. I got to be super careful about this particular fight because I'm really low in HP. So I think I'll probably get out my bow this time around. Try and see if I can get some bow skill a little bit here. Obviously, it's going to be pretty impossible from this range. Maybe maybe I'll get a bit lucky, but. Oh, 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 I did actually hit something. Bear in mind, obviously, from a fair distance away, you're not really going to be doing that much damage because the arrow obviously loses power over time, you know, over covering the distances. And, oh no, I'm going to get shot and killed, aren't I? I have a bad feeling about this. Look at these guys. They all have bows themselves. I have a bad feeling. Oh no. Maybe if I say I have a bad feeling, it will it will kind of, um, you know, help me out a little bit. Oh. Well... <laughs> No, okay, apparently. <laughs> apparently it did not. It did not help me out at all, but okay, never mind. It's absolutely fine. This was an easy enough victory for us anyway, and we are losing a couple of units here and there. We actually lost three House Targaryen Knights. All right, <laughs> I guess that happens. Anyway, let's get some cell swords here. Mercenary Mace Man, okay, sure, and we can take some prisoners as well. Now, bear in mind that I think... Whoa, that's actually a really nice longbow. Unfortunately, I can't use it on horseback. So, that's uh, that's a huge shame. Oh, well, never mind. Anyway, basically, what's really cool about this as well is that we have a significant amount of manual laborers. So, what we can do is, obviously, if we find a manual laborer task, we're going to make significant money from that, too. Anyway, let's make our way on. What, how, have I, how have I done with one-handed? Oh, look at that. I'm almost at 100 skill. Okay, I'm looking forward to it. I am very much looking forward to that. Okay, so loose formations or tight formations. Personally, for me, I have a personal preference of loose formations, just generally because whenever I've placed people into a shield wall formation, they are always way too slow for me, and I just, I don't know, maybe, maybe I just don't have the patience for it. I don't know, but loose formations has always done pretty well for me, so I'm happy with that because I usually use line formations and loose formations. Line formations with our infantry, and loose formations with our archers and so on and so forth. So it really, you know, just makes sense for me to go for that uh, rather than anything else. I'm actually just going to go over here to Bridalwood real fast and to Stoke Village. And I'm just going to see whether there are any tasks. And okay, well, well, well that's put pay to that, hasn't it? There are no tasks available there. And there is also King's Landing to interact with now as well. So let's actually have a look. All right. So what do they actually have available here? Because as far as I'm aware, they have a, a brewery. And a brewery is probably the best thing for us to go for because there are two grain villages really, really close by. Um, let's see what else they have. They have a velvet weavery. And they also have a silversmith. It makes sense for them to have a silversmith because there is a silver ore village relatively close by as well. There, are, there There's actually three grain villages really close by 
to King's Landing. So uh, they have a massive amount of grain here. How much beer do they have? It's not selling for a huge amount. How's their silver doing? Silver is okay. Mm, what do they actually? What do they make uh, for in in the uh, in the silver silversmith? What do they actually make in the silversmith? I I have no idea. Let me yes. let me just very quickly have a look here. Wow. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> okay. I thought to myself, okay, I should be able to, you know, buy this workshop relatively easily because I have 34, 35,000 or something like that. Oh, yeah, it says up here. Um, yeah, so we have 35,000, but apparently that's not enough. That is not enough to buy the silversmith. So I'm actually wondering, is the brewery cheaper or more expensive? Nope, it is exactly the same. Right. Okay, so that has put paid to that, hasn't it? Okay, great. Hmm. Wonderful. Right. Okay. Well, I am actually now looking for manual laborer task because that's going to give me an insane amount of cash for not much work because I have a significant amount of prisoners already and I don't need to go looking for them. Don't need to do the caravan mission or anything like that. Should be pretty simple. Ah, we've actually declared war. Oh, apparently Daenerys has actually declared war on Aegon. Right. Okay. <laughs> Well, that's funny. Uh, that's very funny. All right. So, yeah, first of all, don't worry about this. Everything's going to work out just fine. I am going to be siding with the nearest here. And that means, you know what that means. That means I'm going to be renouncing my allegiance as a mercenary to Aegon. And I'm going to be going over to Daenerys after we have arrived in her vicinity and speaking to one of her vassals. Because I don't think, I'm, I'm actually not entirely sure how that works because... Uh, in Warband, it's a bit weird, you know, the way that it changes around. But anyway, yeah, nothing, nothing really to worry about there. Anyway, let's just make our way over here. I'm hopeful that this is going to be a manual labor task. No, needs help with brigands. Robber knights are going to be insane. Um, if we could actually capture them, we would gain so much cash from a manual labor task. It would be absolutely crazy. Um, but yeah, I think this is probably going to... Oh, are you serious? Okay, yeah, apparently they... Uh, okay, fine. Unfortunately, we don't seem to have anything that we can do here. So I think the only thing I can do potentially is go in here. Maybe there's going to be something that I can maybe sell. Maybe, th maybe there is actually something that I can sell. But I don't really want to be in a situation where I have no money left. Because that's always a possibility, you know. There's always a possibility for me to think to myself, okay, I'm going to buy this workshop. No idea whether it's going to be any good, but I'm going to buy the workshop nevertheless. And I'll buy it, and then it will give me, you know, negative profit every single day. That has happened to me multiple times in Bannerlord, and it's, it's quite frustrating. Even if, okay, now here's the thing. Even if I have a town that has villages tied to it that are relatively good in regards to you know iron ore supply or uh, grain or uh, sheep or whatever a number of different things have have happened in the past where i've done that and the workshop still doesn't give me a huge amount so i'm actually kind of wondering what the secret is to it so if anyone knows by all means let me know because as far as i'm aware the best thing to do is to try and find a town that has villages tied to it that are producing the thing that your village wants to utilize. And I've done that, as I say. I've done that quite a few times and it just hasn't made any difference whatsoever, so I'm not sure. Anyway, there we go. We gained another six renown for this. Obviously, we have a pretty significant army size as it is right now, so I think I should technically be able to sell most of my armor here. I think I can probably sell most of the armor. I'm just going to equip some people with stuff before I actually do that. Lord Varus really wants to uh, use that camel, so I guess I'm just going to leave him with that. Let's sell all of this. That's going to give me 3,600. We can actually sell all of this as well if we want to. This is the longbow, though, which is exactly what I don't want to use. Let me just have a look and see who's... Yeah, he's actually using the thing that I wanted to use. So, um, you know what I'm actually going to do? I'm going to just have him be a... Um, just have him be an archer, I think. Just have him be an archer, and we're just going to take the longbow and give him that. And I'm going to use the heavy recurve bow, obviously. So he's just going to use this, because he actually does have 50 bow skill. So it kind of makes sense, right? And otherwise, do we have any... Oh, we don't have any shields or anything like that. Ah, oh, I don't know whether it matters. He's going to be staying at the back anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Does he have any bow skill, this guy? 
No, he has he has 30 bow skill. I mean, is it good for him to use this? Maybe. Maybe it is good for him to use this. So we're just gonna give him some just gonna give him some arrows, gonna just lock this in place, and we'll just sell all of that. And obviously I could potentially sell the axe if we want to. Uh, for additional money, but I don't think that's particularly necessary right now because we are just going to do this. I'm going to sell my prisoners. Who's this guy? All right, yeah, he's not looking particularly good for me. I'm just going to ransom all the prisoners, unfortunately. I kind of wanted to, as I say, find the manual laborer task, but it's not going to work. It's just not going to work. Maybe, uh, yeah, uh, never mind. Okay, yeah, so we're just going to go over to King's Landing now. We have to spend, how much is it? I think it's... 37,000 or something like that. And as you can see, look at look at look at the people from Aegon's faction. They are really not doing very well at all. They are getting themselves taken prisoner quite consistently. And you can see here that they're paying me a significant amount right now, which is actually really nice. So um, I'm basically just going to whoa, okay, he himself got taken prisoner too. Wow, okay, I'm actually not entirely sure what's even going on there. But all right, that seems funny. And I'm now making money again. Okay, that's kind of strange. All right, well, uh, Velvet Weavery, I think I'll get the Silversmith. Should I get the Silversmith or the Brewery? Because if I get the Silversmith, it's more likely to give me more. Because silver is... Hmm. Now I'm kind of wondering whether that's a good idea. Because here's the thing. Look at the grain amounts, right? And then look at the beer. I mean, the beer sells for 44 gold. Which isn't particularly bad. Uh, I mean, I can actually sell this stuff as well, actually. Um, we might as well do that. Let's just sell this stuff. Just get rid of all of that. Get rid of the wine and all that. And there we go. Okay, that's absolutely fantastic. So, yeah. Um, this is going to actually give me 4,800. So, this is pretty good. So, I think I'm, I'm going to try it, okay? We're going to try it. And we'll go with the... Um, we'll go with the silversmith, all right? We'll go with the silversmith, and then we'll see what happens. No one wants to equip these shields. Are you serious? Come on now. There is someone that needs a shield. There you go. You need a shield. There we are. Okay, fantastic. So, yeah. We're going to try the silversmith, but if it doesn't work out, then I can always come back here and uh, a little bit later, and we'll see what we can do with it. But there you go. I, I literally paid 37000 I still have 9000 but that is obviously a very small amount if you consider how much we're actually going to be outlaying for the amount of um, for the amount of troops that we have. Anyway, we're going to make our way all the way back here, and we're going to become a mercenary for Daenerys. All right, so we're actually in Mia right now because I'm thinking to myself, hey, you know what? We might as well go into a tournament here. I was kind of hoping we could get a horse. But, uh, yeah, obviously not lucky enough to do that. So we're just going to have to fight for some Mormont Bracers. Which is obviously not anything... Uh, yeah, it's not too terrible, right? It's not too terrible, but it is definitely something that maybe one of our companions could utilize. I'm just going to try and murder people as fast as we possibly can. And we should... Try to shoot that guy. Ah, are you serious? Come on now. Can I, can I please? Yes, there we go. All right. I kind of want to get, um, I really want to get to 100 one-handed. That actually brings me to the next point, actually, because I, I personally feel like uh, my Duelist series, obviously that, that was a while ago, right? That was, you know, quite a few versions back. Still absolutely fantastic, super entertaining series. For me personally, I, I very much enjoyed that. Anyway, point is, if I were to do that now, I would gain so much renown early on. I would literally have clan tier three in no time at all. It's actually kind of ludicrous, probably how much renown you could get, because imagine it, by default, you get three renown, right, as a base. And then with the first initial perk from charm skill, which is, well, should be pretty easy to get, you get another three. And then the 100 level for one-handed is doubling your renown that you gain from tournaments. And so obviously what you're going to get is you're going to get 12. You're literally going to get 12 renown every single time you win a tournament. And that is incredible to me. Because just think about that. You need 50 renown to be able to make clan tier 1. And then you obviously need, I don't even know how much for clan tier 2. 
and so on. But literally 12 for now, that is just insane. And obviously, if you think about the fact that you are then going to be the top of the leaderboard as well, you're going to be gaining renown passively over time when you are the leader of that leaderboard. So, yeah, that really makes a huge difference. Let's actually take a look at the leaderboard. Oh, look at this. We won 17 tournaments. Wow, Gregor's actually been sleeping, apparently. He's not won anything since that time. Stannis has been doing some work as well, by the looks of things. Okay, well, that's interesting. Anyway, this is where we currently are, as you can see. Not too far away. Oh, and apparently Daenerys has already taken the first... Uh, the first town from uh, from Aegon, which is actually hilarious, because as far as I'm aware, uh, Mantaris was uh, apparently one of the strongest defended places. So I, I don't know, maybe maybe not, maybe that was not the case. Anyway, um, yeah, we're probably going to be renouncing our allegiance relatively soon. I'm still being paid a um, relatively decent amount, maybe. Oh, oh, my, oh no, actually, that's my workshop. Oh, my workshop is actually giving me 314. Really? Okay, maybe I did a good job then uh, choosing the uh, choosing the silversmith. It seems like it is actually paying off quite a bit, even though it's obviously not you know covering my my wages. It's definitely making a significant dent in them by giving me 350 per day which is quite nice. Anyway, let's just wait here for a little bit of time. I want to go in here one last tournament before we make our way over. Ah, this is actually a pretty nice weapon. Okay, yeah. This is a pretty nice weapon. I love this weapon, actually. This is one of the weapons I used in a previous series. Literally one of the most fun that you can utilize. It is so damaging for such a... Such a weird-looking, really uh, underwhelming weapon. That's the funny thing about it. Because for me personally, I would never expect this weapon to actually be any good. But trust me, that mace is actually secretly good like really really good and if you are you know if you're someone that's struggling with i don't know one-handed weapon proficiency or just generally learning how to i don't know learning how to use a, a shorter reach weapon or something like that i don't know let's say that you're new to the game and you're not really sure what to really go for and if you're having problems like you know deciding on a weapon that you want to use well, either, obviously, you know, I've already kind of recommended the, uh, the Star Falchion, for example. That was such a, you know, in my opinion, that's a really fun weapon to use too. But if you're looking for something a little bit faster, a little bit more close quarters focused, and, you know, let's say you're playing a roguery based character or something like that, and you're, um, you know, you're going to fight a bunch of bandits out in the middle of nowhere or something, then this weapon is absolutely fantastic. You can't take it into the streets, I don't believe. Um, but it is still amazing, you know. The, the reach is really, really low, but it does surprising damage. And that's the that's the thing, you know. That's the thing you've got to take away from that. And that's the reason why I was also mentioning the Duelist series as well, because, as I say, that series literally just, just has you using, you know, a one-handed weapon without a shield. And you've got to have something super fast to be able to capitalize on your overall movement speed and mobility and having this maze oh yeah you're gonna just absolutely obliterate pretty much any high tier unit as well that stands in your way because look at this thing it's got an amazing swing speed its swing damage is not that high but obviously it's a mace it doesn't really have a huge amount of damage and the length is ideal for close quarters combat so i'm talking about sieges i'm talking about duels anything like that this mace is going to absolutely excel. So if you are looking for something like that, then look no further because the Militia Pernach thing is very good. At least I think so. That's a recommendation from me at least. But, you know, as I say, if you want something on cavalry, you know, like on horseback, definitely go with the uh, the Star Falchion if you're looking for like a one-handed or something. Obviously, there are a number of other things that you could go for too. Maybe you prefer pole arms, and then you can just go for that. But, you know, if you're going for one-handed, then... Uh, the Star Falchion is definitely the way to go on horseback. Yeah! Or at least I think so. Anyway, let me see if I can actually win this now. Eris is here. Uh, how, how is... Uh, <laughs> I was going to make a Final Fantasy reference, but no. Let's not do that. Okay, so yeah. Anyway, uh, we're, 
we're just breezing through these tournament rounds. I'm not, I'm not even sure how that's even happening, to be honest, because generally, uh, as we've seen in the past, uh, well, in the not too, not too distant past, uh, tournaments can still give me some problems. Yeah, they really can. Anyway, there we go. We were able to achieve victory there. Unfortunately, still not being able to win a horse, but we can't always get what we want, can we? Anyway, there we go. We have now achieved victory and we are probably going to be leaving our faction and hopefully being able to find someone to speak to to uh, join uh, join Daenerys, maybe. Uh, because she's obviously at war, so now she is at war. We can actually, you know, join her as a mercenary because I actually, you know, did ask her beforehand. Um, yeah, now we have 96 in one handed. Hopefully I'll be able to make it there. Oh, look at this. Look at this. We actually have 25 in medicine. That's fantastic. Perfect timing. Absolutely perfect timing. We'll go for preventive medicine here. And I will probably go for another point in smithing. We are going to be doing smithing at some point, but I'm not going to do that on screen, I don't think. Um, I think that might be a little bit too, um, I don't know, a little bit too repetitive potentially. Anyway, let's just see. Hired crossbow. Yeah, I'll go for the hired crossbow guys. Um, Wait a minute. Do these guys... Oh, yeah, these guys... Okay, yeah, I leveled those guys up. But, okay. Mm, never mind. Yeah, I leveled them up beforehand by mistake. I recall that very, very vividly. Wonderful. Mm -hmm, yes. Anyway, these guys are all kind of kitted out decently enough. Let's go over to our party screen, though, because what we want to do... Make him the medic. And this guy can be the engineer, but we're not going to really be doing anything regarding that anyway. There are 41 pirates here. I'd actually like to fight those 41 pirates... But I'm not going to... Wait a minute. There's two groups of 41 pirates? Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is absolutely perfect. Okay, so what we're going to do very quickly here. Leave the kingdom. Boom, there we go. And then what we're going to do is I'm literally going to send a message to Daenerys. I'm going to send a raven over to her. And hopefully... Uh, I hope it's not going to take too long. I, don't, I hope it's not going to take three days. It said three days, but I, surely it's not going to take three days if Daenerys is right over there. It should... There we go. Oh, yeah, there you go. It was a lot lot quicker. It's been a while. All right. So I would like to enter your service, and I will probably... <sighs> that's the thing. Do we want to be a vassal? Or do we want to be a mercenary? I think right now we probably want to be a mercenary because becoming a vassal is... Mm, probably for someone that has a slightly more well fleshed out army. And my army right now is not looking particularly good. I only have 50 units, really not going to make too much of a benefit for uh, Daenerys's, you know, uh, campaign or anything like that. So I'm going to say, uh, yeah, we do not need. Are you serious? Wow. Okay. So she doesn't want, she literally does not want. Uh, she doesn't want mercenaries. Okay, well, that puts paid to that, doesn't it? Right, so I guess we're going to become a, uh, a vassal then instead, which I guess is okay because, you know, being able to marry her potentially as a vassal is maybe, maybe kind of cool. I don't know. And now she is actually joining, uh, well, giving me some giving me some units. Um, I was kind of hoping for more than that, actually, Daenerys. Oh, no, you only gave me six. Oh, you did give me some very cool armor, though. Hello there. Okay. Um, yeah, that's very nice. Okay, yeah, there we go. We're looking pretty cool. And we can now move on. You have done a wise thing, Elias. Serve me well, and I promise you will rise high. Okay, well, I'm not entirely sure about that, to be honest. But um, what, what about this? I would like to propose an alliance between our families through marriage. Maybe not the best idea to ask her that right now. Because I'm thinking to myself, I'd probably like to get some um, <laughs> some charm skill before I do that. And look at that. There we go. Beartilt has joined old Valyria. Now, hilariously enough, look at my armor. I feel so embarrassed right now. I feel so embarrassed for Elias because look at him. Look at what he's doing. Look at what he's wearing right here. This is terrible. This is absolutely awful. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, there's no accounting for taste, I suppose. Anyway, here we go. I'm just going to go in against these pirates here. I was actually... I had a game plan here. I thought to myself, okay, when I saw these pirates, I thought, okay, this is going to be fantastic. If we can become a mercenary and then fight the pirates, we're going to gain a significant amount of influence, and then that influence can be converted into money, and then we're going to have a much easier time of recouping the losses from our silversmith. 
But unfortunately, that was not to be. No, that was not to be. And so now we have to do this, which is still good. It's still going to be good because... Well, uh, maybe it's not still going to be good. I don't know. Maybe... It, I, I don't know what's going on with this episode, but I'm literally getting murdered left, right, and center. Hopefully my, um, my forces are actually going to do okay here. Okay, yeah, they just completely obliterated the opponent, so shouldn't need to worry too much about that, but yeah, that, um, that was not anticipated. I, I thought to myself, yeah, I should be absolutely fine, you know, uh, these are literally just pirates. They shouldn't be able to do really anything to me, but no, 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 they, they very much were. Yes, they very much were able to do stuff. Okay, so yeah, we're just going to replace my boots real fast. Um, probably give people my other stuff. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. And uh, yeah, we can now move on to the next band of pirates. Amusingly enough, I'm not sure how there are so many of them in this area, but I'm happy to see them, to be honest, because they're going to give us a significant amount of cash, and we're just going to charge everyone in once again. Generally, I'm not going to be charging everyone in against a regular vassal, for example. Fighting a vassal is a completely different, you know, kettle of fish. But, uh, you know, right now we're just fighting pirates and I don't see a real reason to be utilizing tactics so much. Considering I just want to get one-handed weapon proficiency as well. So I'm just going to try my best to slash at as many people as possible. Let's try not to get killed though, please, Elias. Oh, no, no. He's going to die, isn't he? I have a bad feeling about this. Or maybe not. I don't know. Maybe, maybe he's going to be okay. He's distracting a couple of people. That's nice. Oh, these guys have good shields, don't they? There we go. Nice. Oh yeah, these guys are now running. That's absolutely perfect. Now we can actually just get some nice little slashes on them. And I think I should have 100 in one-handed now. Or at least I, I think I should. And there we have it. Everyone has been eliminated. And we lost another four units. But we're trading units basically for renown at this point. And look at what is going on with the amount of prisoners we're able to take. This is absolutely insane. Okay. Uh, I kind of... You know what? Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're going to have to get rid of the tier 2s and get the tier 3s, get the tier 4s, and then we'll just get the rest. There we are. And now we can move on. Okay, we got some fine ironborn boots. Nice. We've got even better gear. Then we can also equip some of our other people with some additional stuff too. And we're making everyone much better over time. All right, so let's make our way through enemy territory. This is maybe not the best idea for me to do, but I'm going to do it nevertheless. Okay, uh, yeah, well, Mantaris is actually ours now, so we should be, I mean, that should be pretty good, you know, that should be pretty fine. So let's just go ahead and do that. And we're going to be recruiting some people. There's actually a tournament running there as well, amu amusingly enough. Definitely wouldn't have, wouldn't have expected a tournament to be running right after the conquering of the town, but apparently it is. And I kind of want to find a manual laborer task. I don't know how many times I've said manual laborer in this series, but it's been a lot. Yes, indeed. Okay, there is actually a... Hmm. There is actually a village over there, which we could potentially find a manual laborer task in. But the question is, how likely is it? Ooh, maybe it is quite likely. Okay, there's John Connington. Let's try to avoid him for the moment. I don't really have the ability to fight him. Please, please, please. Yes. I there we go. Absolutely perfect. I What? I don't wish to speak about that. As you know, our factions are at war. Okay. Well, didn't actually expect that to be the case. Because generally, if you have enough influence or enough, um, you know, relation with a particular village, in Warband at least, you are then able to speak to the Elder. But apparently doesn't matter whether you have relation with them or not they're just going to be like no i will not speak to you which is actually kind of sad but oh well never mind can't do much about that now i guess i'm just going to sell these to some random who's this guy hmm he's got steward skill yeah he's got roguery uh, i mean he's good don't get me wrong he's good look at his one-handed skill his one-handed skill is really really nice but i don't think i can really I don't know. I don't think I, I can really justify that. We're just going to sell the prisoners to the ransom broker, which is obviously not ideal, but 
It's kind of what we had to do. And here we go. Finally, look at this. Double the amount of renown gained from tournaments. That's exactly what we wanted. And we also have our charm skill leveling up quite nicely too. Look at that. 69 charm skill now. And we're going to be going for more influence gained from battles. So we can start influencing some policies and everything. And we can start calling for policies and... Um, you know, calling for uh, for armies and, and things like that. It's really going to make a huge difference. And uh, let's actually go and see what Jorah is doing here. Because apparently he wants to besiege this. What, what, what? Okay, question. Why is the garrison all wounded? Every single unit in the garrison is wounded right now. 190 of them. Okay, that's kind of weird. That might be the reason why they are uh, so easily able to capture these things. Going to join the siege. Might as well go into the siege with them, right? We might as well join them. Hopefully I'm not going to lose too many units uh, from the uh, siege, bomb siege bombardment casualties or whatever because they seem to be doing some weird stuff with ballistas for some reason. Not sure why they decided to do that, but okay. Anyway, let's hope that Jorah knows what he's doing. I was kind of hoping that he would, but it may not actually end up being the case. Oh, and now look at that. We have another faction elimination. Because wasn't there another faction elimination that we saw? I'm, I'm not entirely sure whether you saw that or not. But there was a faction elimination beforehand. And look at Tyrosh. It's completely gone. It is literally completely gone. And we can now vote for the owner. I Oh, you want to give this to me. Uh, okay. Mm. This is not actually what I wanted. I'm going to spend 20 influence to vote for someone else so that I gain some charm skill. Uh, but it's still going to go to me, unfortunately. Um, I'm going to have to leave this, actually. Where is Demon Gate? It's a cool name. Don't. Oh, no. Oh, oh, actually, wait, wait. This is actually not too bad. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. I might be jumping to conclusions a little bit too hard here. But I think we should be fine with holding it that's the um that's my main concern here because if i hold it wait a minute so that means oh you s okay that that that's frustrating so you know that uh, that village that wouldn't speak to me before that's actually mine now which is <laughs> that is hilarious okay yeah so unfortunately not going to be able to really you know make anything happen there but thankfully look at this they've actually got a whole bunch of projects already being made and also what's wonderful about this is that my culture is valerian and i don't need a governor now so that's great because the owner is is me so <laughs> that's actually pretty cool anyway uh we're just going to go for this i need to actually do settlement loyalty potentially we also need to increase the food Ah, oh, maybe maybe we don't even need to increase the food actually doesn't seem like we need to do that so i'm just going to do this and we're going to spend Oh, we're going to spend nothing at all, apparently. Yeah, that is a little bit problematic. Oh, okay. They gave, they gave me a lot of troops as well. They gave me some pretty cool troops. So I'm just going to take the Valyrians. Oh, not the levies. Wait a minute. Do the levies actually become anything? Yes, they do. Oh, never mind. Okay. Yeah, so we'll take those. And I suppose we'll leave the rest. Uh, I could probably just swap these guys back in here. There we go. Okay, wonderful. That's not too bad. Okay, so here's the thing. We're now having some issues. Okay, hello. Go, 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 go. Go, Grey Worm. Is that you? Yeah, that's Grey Worm. Go, go, go. Okay, come on now. I'm going to help you, sir. Let's do this. That's close yes. There we go. John Connington. Good work, sir. Okay. Oh, look at this. Let us settle this according to the old ways. I challenge you to a duel. Oh, okay. That's cool. You know, I kind of want to do that just for the sake of attempting it but the problem is i kind of want the battle loot <laughs> oh no okay fine we're, we're not we're just gonna go in okay we're just gonna go into a normal battle i will do a duel later but i really want that battle loot okay so let's have a look here um i need to give i need to actually name someone as the uh as the infantry leader i'm actually not entirely sure why i didn't do that beforehand but okay that's a bit strange. Okay, well, there you go. We, we've done it now, so I guess that's good. Whoa, this guy has so many... Oh, so many cavalry. So many cavalry. Okay, well, uh, yeah, this is as good a time as any to level up my bow skill, isn't it? Because obviously I have now leveled up my one-handed. My one-handed is now at 100, so shouldn't have to worry too much about that any further.
Well, that was simple enough, wasn't it? Yes, not too bad for us to achieve victory there. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I felt like that was pretty decent. It seems like our forces are dramatically better than the opponent, but obviously you've got to bear in mind that he was very much outnumbered, which is to be expected, I suppose. But anyway, ooh, got some nice arrows there. Might be pretty good for us. Not too bad. Gonna kind of hope for a little bit more killing potential. So I'm kind of happy to take that, even if it does reduce our overall stack amount. We can actually level up this guy as well. There we have it. Okay, so it seems as though um, this is very much going to be a pretty quick conquering of Aegon's forces, which is actually kind of um, <laughs> kind of impressive, to be honest. Anyway, that is going to be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.